I always start my sessions with our mission, our mission in mind. So our mission at Flipgrid is to help you empower every learner on the planet to share their voice and respect the diverse voices of others. So this platform, this Flipgrid platform allows you to give this space for our students to share their voices in cualquier idioma, English, Spanish, or any other language. And they feel comfortable about this. I'm gonna show you all the tools. We're going to be talking about the content objective and the language objective for today's class. And look at our content objective. Look at our, what we are going to learn today. We are going to explore the different features that make Flipgrid the perfect tool to empower every student. And our language objective for today is going to be, I will engage in written and verbal discussions about how we can promote social learning through academic concepts, right? So my CO is the what. What is it that I'm going to learn? And my LO is like how using all of the language domains, how am I going to learn my CO? How am I going to accomplish this practicing all my language domains, right? Which is my language acquisition. So we are going to be talking about Flipgrid, but we're also going to be talking about creating these topic activities for our students where they are going to be using all of the language domains. And we're also going to be talking about Del Paz as well. And por favorcito, por favorcito, feel free to open your mic if you have any questions. This is, this is a uh, meeting, es una juntita among friends. We're friends. I want you to be totally relaxed. I want you to feel like totally, totally relaxed to ask any questions. If I'm going too fast, because I know sometimes I can, just open your mic and say, Feli, can you say that again? Feli, can you go back to the previous slide? Or whatever question, I'm here to help you. Por favor, estoy aquí para servirles. Students, I always, always, always keep, I always start this with, with this in mind. I always tell my teachers, I always, always, always remind my teachers that it's all about relationships. So students don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. So it's always bringing our brain, our heart, so that boom, the learning can happen, right? Que se prenda ese foquito so that the light can go, can go on. But it's our minds and our hearts. So we, I'm going to share with you this approach that I had, that I designed for my babies, for my EL students using Flipgrid. But my point number one in this approach was always about relationships. So we get the brain, we get the heart, we combine it, and then boom, the learning happens, okay? And I'm also going to show you an activity that is going to allow you to know your students a little bit more so that they can feel more comfortable in your class. You know more about them and they know more about you. And that's how relationships happen. And that is how the learning happens in your class, right? We're more relaxed, just like I'm asking you to in this class to be super relaxed. We're here. We're friends. We're going to learn together. We're together in this. So we're going to start with that with relationships por favor and if you already downloaded the app if you're ready with the app i'm gonna ask you to please 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 scan the qr code using the app let me bring my phone to the screen a ver aquí mi telefonito let me uh, open my phone. So if you have your phone and you open the Flipgrid app, you will be able to scan this QR code. It is going to take us, or it's gonna take you to our class. If you don't wanna use your phone, that's totally okay. All you gotta do from whatever um, browser you're using, Chrome or Internet um, uh, Edge or Safari, if you're on a Mac, I just want you to open another window or open another tab. And on this tab, you're going to type www.flipgrid.com. Once you do that, you're gonna be on our website. And in the middle of our website, you're going to find this window, this ventanita right here. And right here where it says, enter a join code, you're gonna click on it and type this code right here. So if you're on the app, you scan the QR code. If you are web-based from whatever device, Chromebook, computer, whatever device you have, 
you go to flipgrid.com and right here in the middle of the screen where it says enter a joint code, you click on it and you type the code right here. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds, por favor, to join our class. 30 seconds, please. Okay, okay. Five seconds, please. Okay. And we are ready. Let me, uh, what you see on the screen now is the teacher perspective. This right here is the class that I created for you. So the name of our class is Ready, Tech, Go. And I can see now that I have 18 members in our class. Now I'm going to show you what you see on the screen. So from my teacher perspective, I was already signed in. I already had an account. I was already signed in. I already created a group, which is the space where I'm going to invite my students to walk into my class so that they can find the topics, which are the activities that I am going to be designing for them so that they can practice everything that they're learning in the classroom and practicing all the language domains. So um, from my teacher perspective, I'm going to click right here on member view and another window is gonna open for me as the teacher so that I see what you all see, you all as my students. This, if you are using this from a computer, this is what you will see. You will see the banner, right? That picture that I selected for this class, the name of our class, the name of the teacher, and also the topics that I have available for you. I have All About Me, Laugh, Punctuation Marks, and Our Pets. So all of these topics are available for my students. And let me just bring the app really quick right here. Let me bring, because uh, my phone is giving me a hard time. I'll bring you the app. There it is. I'll bring you the app in a minute. Okay. That is computer. Nine, uh, seven, three, one. Okay. There it is, my phone is on the screen, right? So from whatever phone you have, it works from Android, it works from an iPhone, all you gotta do is download the app. There it is, the app is right here, it's right here. So here at the very top of the app, once you log into the app as a teacher or as a student, you will be able to see the groups that we as teachers created. Students are going to see the groups that they have participated in because we as teachers are the only ones who can create groups and can create topics. Students are only allowed to join these groups. Ahí está. Okay, there we go. So right here, if you were using the app, all I ask you to do is just click or tap that QR code and you see the Flipgrid, the camera of my phone is now activated. So I'm gonna go really quick. I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint presentation that I was showing you, right? And I'm just gonna scan the QR code and there it is. So you are already in class, right? I was already logged in. So here is the class from the app. And here, let me go back over here. There it is. 
And here is the class from the web. So it looks exactly the same, right? Exactly the same. You're going to be able to see the banner, the name of the class, and also the topics. You see the topics on the app and you see the topics on web. So whatever device, whatever device you have available in your classroom, Flipgrid is going to work. Okie dokie. So I'm going to be jumping from the PowerPoint to the web. to the web and also to the app so that you can see how both of them work. Any questions up to now, por favorcito? Do we have any questions? Were we able to log into class? If you can show me on the, on the chat, an emoji is fine. If you can show me that we're ready to move on, por favor. Let me go to the chat right here. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. So it looks like we're ready. So you're already in my class. And in my class, you're going to be able to find the different activities, right? The different activities that we are going to be using in the classroom to bring all the language domains so that my students continue learning the student expectations, right? Which is the TICs. But I'm also going to be bringing the ELPS and the, the, the different activities so that my students practice all of their language domains. So really quick, Flipgrid is social learning. It's a simple free video discussion to make learning fun, fulfilling, and empowering. What's the only difference between the website and the app? On the app, we have access to these filters, to these lenses. We call them lenses so that students see a very similar tool to what they see on social media, but Flipgrid is completely safe. We as teachers have total control of what happens in our Flipgrid classroom, 100% all the time. We decide who joins the class, how they record their videos, what they said in these videos, and how these videos are shared with the rest of our classroom or with the rest of the people in our classroom. It is completely, completely up to us. What is the first thing that I have to do as a teacher? Well, first of all, I need to create an account, right? So the account is free. If you are a Google district with your Google uh, credentials, you can create a Flipgrid account. If you're a Microsoft district with your Microsoft credentials, your username and your password, you can create a Flipgrid account. So either you're a Google district or a Microsoft district, it works. So once you use your username and your password, your credentials for, for Google or for Microsoft, you create a Flipgrid account. And what is the first thing once I have my account that I need to create? Well, I need to create a group. This is what I showed you. This is the group that I, that I invited you to be my students in. So this group is my community. This is where I invite people so that I can have video discussions with them. And I am in total control of it. You can enter your school email domain, you can connect using Google Classroom, or you can add specific email addresses. So you decide how your students are going to enter your classroom. So if, you, if they're already using Google Classroom, they can use the same credentials they use for Google Classroom to enter your Flipgrid Classroom. If they're using Microsoft Teams, the same credentials that they use to enter your Microsoft Teams, that's exactly what they use here on Flipgrid. So they're gonna walk in, you're gonna share either the QR code or the code with them, just like I did on, on the PowerPoint, and they're going to enter your group. What are they going to find in this group or in these groups? They're going to find topics. The topics is how we get the conversation started. It can be a question, an idea, an experiment, a debate, and whatever you want, depending on what you're teaching or, to, or what you want to know, know about your students. Your community will respond with fun, short videos, just like we see on the screen. Students can access your class from a phone, just like you did, or from a computer or a Chromebook or a tablet. Whatever device they have, as long as they have access to the internet and a webcam, it works. 
And that's how the magic happened, my friends. So your community engages in video discussions. They can view the videos. They can send feedback to each other. They can leave comments or they, the feedback, again, the comments, the viewing and the feedback is completely up to you. You're gonna see in this class that I uh, created for you, I have the class where I am the only audience for the videos. What that means is that I, the teacher, am the only one who, who can see the videos, who can watch these videos. Once I approve my students' videos, then I make them active, and then the rest of my participants in this group can watch the videos. So that's an, it's an extra setting that I'll show you how to do it so that you are the first audience, right? Digital citizenship all the time, right? Very important for our students to know about the digital citizenship and how it is important to know about this, right? So, and it's also a way for our students to feel more secure, right? Less stress that, oh, it's only Miss Feli, the, the only one that is gonna watch my video. And once I'm ready, I can, I can tell Ms. Feli that she can share with the rest of the class, right? Relationships, 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 especially when we are acquiring a language. Acquiring a language is stressful, so let's take that stress out of the equation. So once again, just to review, I'm going to create my account using my Google credentials or my Microsoft credentials. Once I have my account, I'm going to create a group. Very easy to create the group. Same thing. I'm going to allow my students to log into my group with their Google credentials or the Microsoft credentials, depending on what you're using your campus or your district. And once they're in your group, they're going to be able to see the topics that you are designing for them. And they are going to answer these questions or answer to these topics in a video format. So far, so good. Questions, por favorcito. Okay, let me know on the chat if we can continue, por favor. If, you, if we have any questions, please, 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 you're more than welcome to open your mics. Okay. okay, I don't see any questions on the chat. So I am going to now jump into a little bit of the elves, a little bit of the telpas, and then I'm gonna show you how we're going to combine everything that we know already about the elves and the telpas and how we're going to bring flip reading to the equation, okay? So the elves, right? Student expectations, what student expectations? So how do we call them? What do we have, right, in Texas? Texas, we have the teaks, right? And at the, well, uh, now, almost at the end of the year, towards the end of the year, we have the START test, right? So that's the assessment that is going to assess all the T's that we cover in the classroom. For English language learners, we have the L's. So we don't only have to teach the T's, but we also have to bring the L's into our classroom. What are the L's? These are gonna be the language proficiency standards, right? They're required and they should be happening in every content area. Everyone in your school is a language teacher, not only your ELA, not only your reading teacher, not only your reading specialist or your bilingual teacher, everyone in your campus is a language teacher. So you have EL students, you're supposed to be teaching the ELFs. They're divided into five sections, my friends. Five, not four, five, which is learning strategies. And then we have the language domains. We have listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And they also identify language proficiency levels, which is beginner, intermediate, advanced, and advanced high, right? This is the data that we get from our kids, from whatever software you're using. When I was in the classroom, we would use DMAC. DMAC was the software that we used that will give us the exact, right? Everything that was LPAT, all of those results, all of that data so that I will know where my students were, what levels, what language proficiency levels they were for every language domain. And what do we have towards semester two? We have the TELPAS test, right? So the TELPAS test is going to assess everything, all of everything that we did with our students when we were targeting the ELFs. So that's what we know. 
Now, what else do we know about the TELPAS test? We know that for the TELPAS test, our students are gonna be assessed in listening, speaking, reading, and writing, right? All the language domains. For this past school year, for this 2021-2022, our students went to the computer lab or from their devices in your classroom maybe, they took the listening and the speaking portion of the TELPAS test in front of a computer, correct? They were listening to some scenarios and then they had to answer questions. For the speaking portion of the TELPAS test, they had to speak, they had to record themselves answering questions, right? So this is exactly what we do on Flipgrid. So TELPAS, we had listening, speaking, one in one assessment. And then I don't know if in your district, it happened on the same day or on a different day. In my school district, we usually had listening and speaking one day and then reading in a different day. But my students, our students, our EL students, also go to the computer to take the reading portion of the TELPAS test. Well, my friends, for this coming school year, 2022-2023, the writing is also going to be in the computer. In previous years, including this one that we just finished, we, we were the ones grading those compositions, right? We were the ones getting all of those writing samples from our EL students, and we as teachers and tell us calibration, right? Remember that? So we were the ones getting all of these compositions and we were the ones grading them. For this coming school year, tell us all of the domains will be online. So instead of our students writing these compositions on paper and us picking them up and grading them and, and all of that good stuff, now everything is gonna happen in the computer. So this is something new that is gonna happen this coming school year. So I am going to show you the test format for the speaking portion of the test. If you're not familiar with it, all I want you to do is just uh, search for it on, on Google or on Microsoft Edge. Just Google it, right? Just Google TELPAS and TELPAS Alternate Educator Guide, and you will be able to find the info that I'm sharing with you about the, 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 the ELFs and the TELPAS test. In this guide, we also know about the PLDs, right? The PLDs are going to be are going to present the main characteristics of each language proficiency. So we know that we have a, a PLD for listening, one for reading, one for writing, and one for reading. So this one will tell you exactly how you have to create or you have to create these, these learning opportunities for our students based on what they need, not on what we as teachers need or our lesson plan is based on what they need. So let's say that you have Feli. Feli the student is in your classroom and you wanna know how Feli is doing in listening. You're gonna check her data, right? From whatever software you use to get all of this data, you're gonna find out that Feli is intermediate in listening. You're gonna come to your PLD and you're going to see, oh, okay. so. This right here is going to tell you the proficiency level, right? The summary statement. But the descriptors are going to give you ideas on how you will be able to design activities for Feli because she's an intermediate in listening. Very important for us to know our PLDs. Now, with all of this, this is my approach. This is what I came up with. And this is what I use with my students so that we had beautiful results, not only in the classroom, in language acquisition, but on the start test and on the TELPAS test. Because my students in eighth grade, they had to take the start test and they also had to take the TELPAS test. So this is how I brought everything into one formula. So I personalized instruction with Flipgrid. Relationships, 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 right? We always start with those relationships. Then what did I do? I designed topics in Flipgrid that incorporated the student expectations, which is the TEKS, and offer opportunities for students to practice all language domains 
which is the else, and I combine them. Two for the price of one, o como decimos en México, donde soy originaria, vamos a matar dos pájaros de un tiro. We get one, we get two, we combine them, and we are teaching our student expectation. Our students are on level, but we're also providing them with the different language activities so that they can also acquire and practice the language. Support, what support did I offer for my students? Visuals, definitely, right? We all use visuals. We use sentence stems, right? If I want them to speak in complete sentences, then I need to show them how they can speak in complete sentences. So I'm gonna provide them with sentence stems, right? It's part of that scaffolding that we offer for our students. Anchor charts, una maravilla, right? They look beautiful on our walls, but if we can bring them into a flipgrid topic, even better. Now they're gonna be interactive anchor charts. And also within Flipgrid, we have Immersive Reader. If you're not familiar with Immersive Reader, I'm gonna ask you just search for it, Google it. It is already in Flipgrid. You don't have to do anything but create the topic and Immersive Reader is already there. What's Immersive Reader? Immersive Reader is that extra, extra, extra amazing scaffolding for your students. Can Immersive Reader will be able to read the topic for your student, translate it. It's also going to be able to identify the parts of speech, and it is it, it is totally amazing. And I want you to see I want you to see it in action in a minute. Now the interaction, right? How did I have my students interactive and practice those language domains? Well, I provide instructional opportunities on those topics for my students to interact socially my bigs and academically my cops, right? Using Flipgrid because they, on the TELPAS test, my friends, they will be tested on both, on social and academic. Because now on the TELPAS test, we have we have science questions. We have math questions. Yes, we don't, they don't have to solve the math problem, but they need to explain what's happening in that word problem in math. So it's all about socially beautiful. And our students are usually more advanced or almost advanced high when it's social, but when it's academically, ooh, that's when the struggle happens, right? And remember, in order for me to be strong in my cops, it takes up to seven years, my friends, seven years when you are, uh, uh, when you're acquiring a language. As part of Flipgrid, we also have mixed things. And that's where the progress monitoring happened. So the proficiency, I use my proficiency level descriptors so that I have an idea how I'm going to be designing my topics for that specific group or that specific class. What is all of this going to, what is, what's going to be the result of all of these? All of this personalized instruction is going to be based on student needs to build and increase fluency in language domains while you're making learning memorable for these students. No more, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go into, oh, it's TELPAS season, right? I'm gonna stop everything I'm doing and I am just gonna get ready for those TELPAS, for the TELPAS test and the TELPAS compositions and, and so on and so forth. If I start with this day one, because by day one, week one, we already know our data. We already know what who we're going to have in the classroom and where they're coming from. So I can already start designing these activities for my students so that they can start day one, week one, week two, just getting used to this format. Because when the test happens, Guess what? Especially for the speaking portion of the test, which all of the state of Texas on that specific domain was very low. It's one of the lowest domains in all the state of Texas. So when, when my students are in my classroom and they have topics such as this one that I have here for you, which is part of our classroom, which is part of the Flipgrid group that I have for you, and they have all of these opportunities within one topic, to practice all the language domains, that's where the magic happens. So this right here is a very, very easy question that I have for my students. Look at this. 
the title of it, and you also have it on our on our Flipgrid class. The title of it is laugh. So I'm asking my students, think about the last time you laughed a lot, right? Boom, past tense. Boom, past tense. We already know that all of these has to be in past tense, right? Which is a little bit more challenging, especially for my beginners and intermediates, right? So record yourself for 90 seconds telling who you were with, what made you laugh, and how it made you feel to laugh so hard. And then I'm also telling them, do not forget to write your response before you begin recording. So before you even click on app response, they have to have what they're going to say. They are going to have a script ready before they record themselves. Why am I asking my students to do this? Because they're allowed to do this during Telpas. And because when you're recording yourself, and I'm pretty sure it has happened to all of us, someone gets, I don't know, someone tells you, Feli, I'm gonna record you right now. I'm gonna ask you three questions and I'm gonna record you right now. And you're gonna be like, oh, hold on, hold on. What are the questions? Hold on, let me think a little bit about it, right? And we get nervous and we start with the, um, uh, uh, that's exactly what our students do when they're taking the speaking portion of the Telpas test, if they don't write their response before they click on record. They have two opportunities to record themselves. So if we do this in an everyday, in the everyday life in our classrooms, by the time they go and take Telpas, this is going to be papitas, right? This is going to be super easy for them because they already have a routine that if they are going to record themselves, they're gonna be writing it. But look at this, my friends, I'm giving them linguistic supports. Why? Because I know they have to tell a story of sequence of events. So I am going to give my students, so scaffold these for my students, providing them with the linguistic supports. Within my topic, I'm telling them, look, you can use the following words to help you tell your story. I might not give the, I might not be giving them the uh, the sentence stems, but I'm already give them, giving them some vocabulary, some linguistic support, some linguistic supports, right? Because maybe this one is for an activity for my advance or maybe my advanced high students or intermediate, right? Or I'm moving my beginners into intermediate. So I, I'm giving them the words that they can use. And I'm also on the right-hand side, I'm adding right here, a video from YouTube that is going to tell them everything about the reasons why we laugh. Because guess what? I'm a science teacher using this in my classroom. So these, this uh, YouTube video, they're going to be practicing their listening skills, but it's also going to help them bring that background knowledge into the equation so that they can answer these questions using scientific words, right? Or that academic vocabulary. I'm also adding right here a reading passage that they can read, that they should read, right? They should read it so that they can also activate that prior knowledge so that when they get everything that they listened, everything that they read, they can write it and they can also use those linguistic supports that we are providing for them. Once they combine all of this, they're going to be able to answer these three questions right here in past tense way easily because the background knowledge was already activated. Did they practice the listening? Yes. The reading? Yes, the writing, definitely. Am I providing them with linguistic supports? Definitely. How are they going to practice the speaking? Once they click on add response, the Flipgrid camera is going to open and they are going to record themselves for a minute and a half. Now, I'm gonna show you where I got this question from because I know we have five more minutes, my friends. This question you see right here, this question, this record your, uh, think about the last time you laughed. I got it from the release Telpas test, the 2020 uh, listening and speaking release test. It is question 30, uh, 36. Look at it, it's exactly the same question. Think about the last time you laughed a lot. The three questions, 
the and this is I took a picture of the the uh, release test. What did I do with the question? I added the listening practice. I added the reading practice. I'm asking my students to write the response because Telpas is not gonna tell you. Our students need to know about this. I'm, I'm providing them with the linguistic supports and then they're gonna practice the speaking, right? So I just created a flipped topic from a Telpas question. I just added a little bit more into it so that it could be even way better for my students. Here it is. I'm going to show you exactly the answer key, what I got it from. It's question 36. It's reporting category number two on Telpas. And the ELPS that is targeting is 3G, which is express opinions, ideas, and feelings ranging from communicating single words and short phrases to participate in extended discussions. So that's what I got it from. I just made it a little bit more more complete for my students so that they could practice all the language domains with one speaking question. Another example right here, this is a science start test. It is fifth grade science. So here it is, a start question into a flip grade question. So all I'm doing, I'm getting the question, I'm unpacking the standard, right? I'm bringing it into my flipped topic and I'm telling my students, here it is. Here's the word bank. Here's the visual, right? Look at the visual. You're going to record a video describing an interaction that would allow a flowering plant to reproduce by self-pollination, exactly how they're asking it on the start test. And I'm giving them the word bank and I'm also telling them for how long they have to record themselves. Because remember that for the Telpas test, we for the speaking portion, we have two types of questions. Question. For some questions, they have to record themselves for 45 seconds. And for some questions, they need to record themselves for 90 seconds, which is a minute and a half, my friends. And if, if our students don't have anything in writing, that minute and a half is going to be an eternity. And that's the reason why our babies are passing the START test but they're not getting advanced high in Telpas and they cannot be exited from the program. It's all about getting our students ready and practicing, 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 creating this day one or week one. Okay, I'm gonna give you another example. This is third grade math from the start test into a flip grade question. One more, which is part of the group that I just shared with you. This is an activity on punctuation marks where I'm asking my students. And you see right here, you're going to be able to see that this topic is moderated. What that means is that I am the only one who watches your videos. Nobody else. So I have an activity on punctuation marks. I'm asking my students what they need to answer. I'm giving them that video so that they can practice the listening. And I'm also adding a reading passage so that they know a little bit more about who invented grammar, right? De quien fue esa grandiosa idea? So that they also practice their reading domain. I got this exact question that I'm asking here. This is a seventh grade start test question that I made it into a Telpas question. So start a la Telpas. That's exactly what I'm doing for my students. This is another way to do it with Flipgrid. This is another question from the Telpas test that I made into a Flipgrid activity. This right here, this is the Telpas writing sampler, because remember now the writing is going to be in the computer. So if you want to know, if you want to see how these, these writing questions are going to look like, they're already on the TA website. They already released some questions, some sample questions for us to see how they're going to be asking or, or the, the specific questions that we'll be asking our students for this writing uh, portion of the Telpas test. I just took a picture, my friends. I All I did, if, if you look at our class, which I know it's, we're at time already, there is a topic on our Flipgrid class that targets this right here and how I brought all the language domains. So 
in the discovery library in Flipgrid, there's a discovery library where you can find all of these topics because I, I wrote these topics. So I'm sharing them on our Flipgrid, Flipgrid platform. So within Flipgrid, if you go to the discovery library and you search right here where it says search topic, you search my name, Feli Garcia Lopez, you will be able to find all of these questions that I showed you for today's class. They're there for you. All you got to do is just click on them, bring them to your group, and they're ready for you. They're already there so that you can share them with your students. This summer, este verano, I'm about to finish a telpas guide with all of these questions, these telpas and star questions, and they're going to be available on our discovery library so that you go to the discovery library, you click on the, on the topic, and you bring it to your class so in in other words we're gonna be we're gonna be the ones doing the planning so that you have all of these telpas start questions ready and available for you remember that if you can think it you can flip grid it and let's empower every student any questions i know we're at time my apologies we're two minutes late but any questions por favorcito any questions and also, as a reminder, thank you so much, Philly, uh, before you exit the session to access the sign-in form that is located in the chat box. I'll go ahead and uh, paste it there one more time. Is there a code to join the group? Yes, of course. Let me share the code with you. It is on the screen. Okay, let me make the screen a little bit bigger. The code is right here. Let me copy it and I'm gonna add it uh, to the chat. Let's see. And it's also on the chat, I can also share the link with you. So I'm going to go right here to share. I'm going to copy the link and I'm going to paste the link. So that link will take you directly to our Flipgrid class as well. How did I share my phone on the screen? I use a software. It's called Reflector. It's a license that you have to buy to download to your computer so that you can reflect your phone on the screen. And I'm also going to add my email address on the chat in case you have any other question. Microsoft.com. It's super easy. F Garcia Lopez at Microsoft.com. So anything I can help you with, I'm just an email away or Let's uh, take the chat on social media. Por favorcito, con, con toda confianza, estoy para servirles. Thank you so much for your time.